guys, it's Angie. Some of you know me as the assistant to author and illustrator Jasper Price. You also know that I am his assistant when he's wearing that other hat of a job of his when he's being a professional zombie psychologist, which you guys know. Um, it's not my favorite part of my job. I don't really enjoy being an assistant to a professional zombie psychologist, but you know, it's been pretty good recently with the social distancing. We have missed you guys seeing you at schools and libraries and festivals, but we have been safe at home with no zombie sock outbreaks. So that's really, really good. Things have been going great. I've been reading lots of books until this morning. And this morning I get up and Jasper's like, look, I'm really sorry, but there's a zombie sock outbreak in the house. And guys, this is just not how I want to spend my social distancing time with zombie sock outbreaks in the home with me because I'd like to social distance from them forever. So I am hiding in Jasper's office while he is taking care of that zombie sock outbreak. Don't mind these little guys here. These are his containment units. He assures me that these guys are harmless. We're just going to pretend like they're not there because I don't like them. So we are going to read a story while Jasper's taking care of a zombie sock outbreak somewhere, we hope. And I'm going to need you guys to help me. I know I cannot hear you or see you right now, but I know you're at home and you're having fun and that you're going to participate with me when we're at schools and libraries. You guys do all the voices of the zombie socks. And I'm going to need you to do that while we're reading this book. Every time there's a zombie sock like this guy on the page here, you're going to go reek, reek. And I'm going to help you by saying reek, reek. So you know when to do it. And hopefully we will not hear any other reek, reeks. Real ones, that means, in the office while we are reading this. Okay, guys, I think we're ready. Zombie Asocalypse, written and illustrated by Jasper Price. By the sniffing of my nose, something stinky this way goes. Susie Small could hold her nose no longer. The awful smell just kept growing stronger. She complained about it to her little brother, Zach, lying on the floor with her furry animal pack. That smell makes me sick, she let him know, wanting the world's worst super stink to go. Not me, said Zach in complete denial, with a shrug and his usual smirky smile. But Susie knew something had to be done because the smell made breathing no fun. And then she realized just what she could do to make her brother sniff out the right clue. Susie got Zach to pause his computer war game by promising to improve his virtual aim. She then took him into the kitchen making things clink, clink, and rattle to prepare her baby brother for an olfactory battle. Now guys, this is a good time. If you don't know what the word olfactory means, go look that up. It's a good vocabulary word. Now come with me, Zach, to a place you've never been. I'm pretty sure it's where we'll need to begin because something in this house smells unclean and it should go into the washing machine. Well, reluctantly, Zach followed his sister's call to the laundry room at the end of the hall. She wasn't wrong. He'd never been there before where dirty clothes were piled up high on the floor. Zach thought cleaning stuff was his mother's chore when he found no fun, hard work, and a bore. Besides, Susie was always there to help, but then suddenly... She began to yelp. <gasps> zombie socks, zombie socks, look Zach over in the hampers. No socks or no happy campers. Reek, reek. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, I think we got a zombie sock outbreak in here, guys. There were some zombie socks. Okay, okay. All right, I, hopefully that was it. All right. Uh, Zach's little eyes went wide with fear as his sister began to jeer. Those dirty socks are stinking up our house, smelling like a rotten cheese-eating mouse. We must do something to outbox these stinky, dirty zombie socks before they nibble all our toes or grubby grab us by the nose. But Zach thought running was what they should really do. If not, he had another idea or two. We can catch those zombie socks inside of a big copper box or just shut the door and lock its socks to put a stop to these zombie socks. Reek, reek. Oh, no, they're everywhere. Okay, all right, I'm staying calm. All right, that won't work is what I'm thinking. First, we have to stump their stinking. And to do that, we have to find out how these zombie socks came about. And I know just who to ask, but it won't be an easy task. We'll have to force him to confess to the zombie socks he's possessed. I see you. Come on out. Don't sit in there and pout. I can see you're hiding in the dryer, sucking a sock like a pacifier. Reek, reek, reek. Oh, well, they're in the book. They're everywhere. Oh, oh okay. All right. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, see him, Zachary, behind those clean, dry clothes, clinging to his fur and hanging off his nose. It's the maker of mismatched pairs, the kind of socks nobody wears. We see you, sock monster, hiding in the dryer. So answer our question and don't be a liar. How did you make these socks sting so bad, causing them to go completely mad? 
it wasn't me, the sock monster said. You should ask the boogie man instead. You'll find him hiding under Zack's bed where the other zombie socks he has bred. Creak, 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 Okay. Oh, oh, all right. Susie ran into her little brother's room. Zack followed after her into the gloom, quickly dropping to their hands and knees. They could smell the odor of two cheese. And there. Crouched underneath the bed, with a sheet pulled over his head, was the boogeyman pretending to sleep, counting zombie socks as if they were sheep. Reek, 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 reek. Oh, oh, oh. oh, stop playing possum, Susie said to the boogeyman under the bed. You turn these socks into stinking zombies, buzzing with flies meaner than killer bees. No, I don't, the boogeyman pleaded. It was their help he said that he needed. Ask the clown in the closet room, oversized clothes. I'll bet that red-nosed joker is the one who knows. This seems like one of his own funny pranks. And if you can stop it, you'll have my vote. Doing such an impractical joke, he swore on his red nose. The socks were here when I woke, so I have no idea what made them so darn crazy. I just keep them away with water from my daisy. However, I happen to know a wise old feller. He's the oddest ogre living in your cellar. He knows a lot about things that stink. You should ask him, is what I think. Creak, creak, creak. So down the steps they went, into the dark descent, to find the odor ogre under the stairs, sleeping and snoring without any cares. Wake up, wake up, wise odorous ogre of lore, and help us put a stop to this zombie sock war. The clown in the closet said you had a clue, one that will show us just what we need to do. Reek, reek, reek. Oh, oh. Opening his eyes, the odor ogre let out a groan. With an unpleasant smell like that, you both should have known. I'll give you a hint to the sticking pop quiz. Just look around and you'll both see what it is. And if you're ready to know a few more clues, the stinky culprits rhyme with clues and come in twos. Finding off zombie socks leaping from the ground, though Susie and Zack looked around and around to figure out what the answer could be, which the ogre said was easy to see. Soon Susie said, I know what it is. All these stinking zombie socks are his. Reek, reek, oh, reek, reek, reek. They just come out every time I say it. Oh, the word that rhymes with clues and comes in twos is Zack's rotten, stinking, never washed shoes. Reek, reek, reek. Don't you see, Zach? The zombie socks come from your shoes. So quick, go back upstairs. We have no time to lose. Reek, reek. Oh, oh. And to help put a stop to this zombie sock laundry, you'll need to take off your shoes and learn how to do laundry. Reek, reek. Oh, oh, reek, reek. So throw your shoes into the washing machine. I'll add extra detergent to make them clean. That will get rid of their stinking bouquet, and the zombie socks will all go away. Reek, reek. Zach shouted, oh no, one's biting my big toe, it's all my fault, I waited too late to save us from the zombie sock fate, reek, 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 oh, oh. no Zach, you saved us, Susie said, look, all the zombie socks are dead, but our victory won't be complete until you go wash your stinking feet, ugh. Oh, goodness. Oh, okay. Well, I think we got to the end. Oh, unraveling the yarn. Uh, says kids keep out, adult eyes only. I'm going to skip this part. I really, I think we got past, I think there's no more zombie socks that can attack us at this point. I think oh, I could be wrong. I could be very wrong about it.
zombie sock out rates by maybe staying shoeless and sockless as much as possible. I hope you're having a good time with your families and you can come visit us at jasperpricebooks.com for some activity sheets that you can download. We've got rhyming sheets, we've got word searches, um, we've got coloring pages for zombie socks uh, and we hope that you enjoyed this reading and that you will share it with your friends. Stay safe guys and watch out for zombie socks. I, I, I don't know what to do. I think the zombie sock outbreak, I think I'm done for. All right, guys, bye. See you soon, I hope. Woo, that was such a fun story time. Oh my goodness, I hope all the kids at home are gonna enjoy that, even though we can't get together at libraries this summer. Oh, they will enjoy that virtual reading and that'll be great. Oh goodness, okay, so now that we're not doing a lot of summer reading programs in person, we're just doing virtual, I guess this means I have to catch up on laundry at the house. Goodness, guys, there's a lot of laundry at the house. Oh, oh my goodness. Guys, I heard something. Did you hear something? Oh, I definitely heard something. Oh, let me, me get a little closer. Oh my goodness, guys. I don't know if you can hear that at home. I'm going to make a zombie sock in my laundry. Oh yeah, it smells really bad. Okay, guys, you know, I don't really like zombie socks. It's my least favorite. Part of my job. Oh, there's definitely something moving in that basket, isn't there? Great. Great. Okay, guys. All right, I'm gonna lift this and I hope I hope you guys can help me see if you see anything inside the See him in there. He's very stinky, very stinky. stinky, stinky yeah. And as a and as a professional zombie psychologist, I always carry with me a professional zombie sock capturing cage. I'll just open it up real quick, and then I'll put the zombie sock in it, and it'll be okay. Oh, oh. Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm a professional. Are you sure you're a professional? I have a bad. I think you made it at Kiko's. <laughs> no, I didn't. Hang on a second. Let me just get in there. And... Oh, he's really stinky. I really thought staying at home would be safer. You gotta make sure you keep your fingers away from their toes because that's where the teeth are. They bite! Jasper, are you okay? I'm okay. You got it? Yep, got it. Oh, you got him? Oh, he's Oh, oh he's fighting you. Oh, oh he's a jumper! Oh, that was very scary. That was okay. very scary. Alright, you think that's it? Well, now for you kids at home, the, I'm gonna tell you some things about zombie socks. Okay, please do. And you, you kids at home may have this at home. It's what zombie socks love to eat. Best of all, it's uh, macaroni and toe cheese. But if, but if you have macaroni and toe cheese at home, which I'm sure you do, make sure it has a zombie sock proof lid on it. That way the zombie socks can't get inside. This one has a zombie sock proof lid on it, so we don't have to worry about so it. Ah! Oh, oh my goodness. I thought you said it was zombie sock proof. I did too. Okay. I did too. That was a close one. Now, you kids at home, you got to you guys know what zombie socks like to have for their dessert? Oh, something really gross, I bet. <laughs> it's stinkberry toe jam. That's what they like having for their dessert. Now, we're not going to open this one up because it does not have a zombie proof lid on it. Okay, we're not going to open it. Not going to open it up. So we're safe. We're completely safe because I'm not going to open not it up. Not going to open it. Okay, good. Guys, don't let them open it. Unless the kids at home want me to open it up. And if you do want me to open it up, shout real loud, open it up. But if you're not going to shout, Okay, I won't open it up. No, don't open it up. You don't want him to open it up. Don't shout and tell him to open it up. You don't want him to open it up. He needs to leave it closed. Because we're safe. Okay, okay. I hear you guys shouting for me to open it up, so I'm going to open it up. Oh, it's always you're shouting for shouting. Don't, don't open it up. Don't open it up. Okay, okay. I'm not going to open it up. Unless you guys really, really want me to open it up. No! I think they want me to open it up. I think they don't, but it's okay. Uh, there's nothing in it. Okay. Ah! Oh my gosh. That was very scary. Oh, that was really close. Oh. And that just goes to show you guys oh, the zombie socks. When you find a few around your house, yeah. that usually means there's more zombie socks. And I, think, much. I think I do smell it something. Does, really Hang on a there. second. Let, not, me, let me check and see if there are any more. It's not just normal stinky laundry, guys. It's like really stinky laundry. There's oh. all more. Open up the gate. Oh. Open up the gate. I quit. Ah. Ah. Jasper? I'm okay. Jasper?
more down here. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Oh, can you get me Oh, there we go. Oh. All right, are we safe? Now, we're safe now, but that just goes to show you these zombie socks are not only stinky, Ooh, yeah, they're, really... they're very, very sneaky. You never know when these zombie socks might be just hiding very anywhere. Sneaky. Very sneaky. Oh, 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 my God. I need some help getting that. You have to help me. Keep going back. Keep going. All right. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that was very close. Are you okay? I'm okay. Uh, okay. Good. But again, okay. that has never happened to me before and probably will never happen again. Guys, it happens all the time. I'm very sorry. <gasps> oh my gosh! It's never gonna happen again, again huh? Uh, Is that what you just said? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to go far with this one. Oh my gosh, uh, how many how many zombies are uh, getting your shoe? Uh, your boots, they keep eating holes. Keep going! They keep keep going! Keep going! in the sock drawer. Oh my gosh. But when you find them, don't just touch the zombie sock anywhere because if you touch the zombie sock anywhere, it could attack you. Oh, oh no! Don't touch it! Ah. Ah. I think you forgot ah. it. Ah. Okay. You all right? I'm fine. Okay. I'm a professional. Okay, you're a professional. Sure you are. Professional. Okay. I want to thank you guys at home for watching us yeah. and, and learning stuff about the zombie apocalypse. Very brave. And I'm gonna say, oh wait a minute! Oh, I think there's more zombie socks around. There's definitely more. Hang on a second. Let me check and see if there's uh, more. Oh, there is more! Oh ah, my gosh! What am I supposed to do? I'm ah, oh, yeah. I'm leaving! Ah, ah, ah. Good luck with your your job. I quit. <laughs> All right, everybody at home, don't panic. I need your guys' help to help me stop this zombie apocalypse. Find the zombie socks in your house and then help me get them in the zombie sock containment unit. Hang on a second. Oh man, they're everywhere in the house now, Jasper. Oh, this you got the unit? It's okay. the zombie sock containment unit. Okay. Now when you get the zombie socks, I'm gonna count to three and you'll throw the zombie socks into the zombie socks containment unit. One, okay. two, three. We got all the zombie socks. All right, good, good job. I want to thank you guys, kids at home for helping us stop the zombie apocalypse. Thank you so much. We couldn't have done it without your help. Oh, we hope you're enjoying your summer reading at home and doing lots of reading, yes? Oh yes, lots of reading. Enjoy reading your books. And now for some questions and answers with author illustrator Jasper Price. Where did you get the idea for zombie apocalypse? I was uh, tr about 12 or 14 years ago, I was driving my car to work and I was listening to NPR radio, a story about uh, a rotten sneaker contest. And it's a, co a real contest where kids get to get their shoes really dirty and stinky and they'll go and have uh, judges at the contest smell their shoes and decide who has the most rotten, stinking shoes. And I thought this was a, a good idea for our story. And so I was thinking about it, you could take that story and write a, a story about kids actually going to the contest and seeing who wins and who loses and why they win and why they lose. But then I started thinking about what happens to the socks inside those really stinky, rotten shoes. And then I kept thinking about it, thinking about a sock stuck down in those really stinky, rotten shoes. And then I started to think they get so angry that they turn into zombie socks. And then that's how I started uh, writing the, the story. How long did it take to write and illustrate the book? 
Well, it took me about four to six weeks to uh, write the story because, you know, when you're writing a story, you have to kind of write it and then read over it and then kind of see what's right and what's wrong and then rewrite it and rewrite it. And in this case, I was writing it in rhyme, so that takes a little longer too. And then once I got the uh, story all worked out to where I thought it was pretty good, I let my assistant, Angie, read over it and um, make sure that everything is working just, just right because when you're writing a story, you, you can't really tell on your own if everything is perfect. And then once she helped me edit the story, then I started uh, thinking about the illustrations that go with the story. And so I would start doing these little uh, thumbnail drawings. They're very, very small drawings to kind of work out how the images should go with the story. And these little images are very small and you just want to make them real simple because you'll be doing lots and lots of them over and over until you get them just right. And then once you get all those little thumbnail drawings just right, you can start doing your big drawings. I still use pencil and paper when I do my drawings. And once I get the big drawings done, then I scan them into a computer and I start adding the color to the drawings. It took me about six to eight months to actually do all the illustrations for the book. Walk us through the illustration process. So first I take the pencil drawing that I made and I scan them into the computer. And then once I get them scanned in, I start doing the ink layer around the drawing to uh, simplify the drawing. Once I get the ink drawing layer done, I hide the pencil layer. And then I start adding the base colors, just the simple base colors. And once I have the base colors in, then I can start adding the lights and shadows to round out the characters. And then I start adding the simple background in. And then I start adding some detail to the background. And then I put in the shadows to ground the characters to the scene. And in this case, I wanted them to be very dramatic, so I had them, the shadows going up on the wall. And then I started adding more details to the scene, like the zombie socks and some of the flies. Now this is that original pencil drawing, and this is the completed page in the book. And this is the full two-page illustration in the book. And now Jasper has a question for the readers watching this. When I'm working on an illustration, sometimes I don't get everything exactly right the first time. So this is one of the pencil drawings that I did for the book. And then this is the finished illustration that went in the book. Can you guys spot some differences in the two drawings? Here's the original pencil drawing. And here's the finished illustration in the book. Well, first off, the big one is I forgot to put the zombie socks in the dryer, even though I'm doing a picture book about zombie socks. In the original pencil drawing, I put a vacuum cleaner in the background, and I like that vacuum cleaner. But in the finished illustration of the book, I took out the vacuum cleaner because I wanted you to not be distracted by the vacuum cleaner in the background. I wanted you to look into the dryer like Susie and Zach are in the book. And I made other changes to the pet. See if you can spot those changes. Do you have any other books, and are you working on any new books at this time? I've written and illustrated another picture book called Double Bogey Goes Way, Way Off Course. And I've written a middle grade novel called The Incredible Shrinking Boy. And I've almost finished the sequel to the middle grade novel The Incredible Shrinking Boy. It's called The Incredible Saurian Adventure. And there's more books coming in the Zombie Apocalypse series. A fun activity for you to do at home is to make your very own zombie sock. Jasper, tell them how they can make their own zombie sock. Well, you find a sock that you're, uh, it's an old sock that you have in your house. One that your parents won't mind you coloring on. And you take your some uh, washable markers and you uh, put some X's for their eyes. And then uh, you can put some more little X's around the toes. Yeah, around the heel too. To make them look more zombie-like. And then uh, you can make some uh, marks around the sides to make it even more zombie-like. Zombie -like. And then you can make some dots to make it even more zombie-like. Now, Jasper, do they have to make it look exactly like yours? They do not. You can use your own imagination to make any kind of zombie sock you want. We've seen all kinds of zombie socks at schools and library visits. 
What kind of zombie socks have you seen? Some kids have done superhero zombie socks. Tuxedo zombie socks. That's one of my favorites. Some kids like to do uh, unicorn zombie socks. Oh my goodness. I've seen kitten zombie socks. Love them. And there have been all mermaids. Oh, mermaids were really, that's one of my favorite ones too. I Spider-Man, that was one of my favorite of the superheroes that some. I saw. There's, there have been some good ones. And with your zombie sock, you can also do a happy face on one side and a scary face on the other if you want. Zombie socks can look like anything. The most important thing is to use your imagination just like when you're reading. And when you are done, your zombie sock can be used as a sock puppet. That is good for playing at home. Like this. And even biting. But not hard. Zombie psychologist like Jasper. Very nicely. A professional zombie psychologist. So professional. <laughs> Thanks, we hope you have fun. Visit jasperpricebooks.com for activity sheets that go along with zombie apocalypse, including word searches, crossword puzzles, and coloring sheets.